You can. Okay, just fine. So, it, can I start? Please. Okay, let's get ready to rumble, right? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Sergei Shevchenko. Uh, I am from Supermega Company. Uh, I am based in Kyiv, Ukraine. And uh, my title is FAE, but that's a kind of uh, fancy name for pre-sales engineer within the company. So I am doing uh, complete solution pre-sales as well as uh, system pre-sales. So everything uh, technical uh, related pre-sales and technical marketing. First off, I would like to thank our uh, long-term uh, uh, and uh, strategic partner ANSYS for this opportunity. And uh, without further ado, uh, let's move. Um, uh, yeah, just a few words about myself. Uh, I'm with the company for seven years, and uh, before that, I worked as uh, the sales engineer within the Intel for 15 years, and for seven years within the uh, HP. Uh, so a strong background uh, for uh, technical pre-sales. And without further ado, uh, my agenda will consist uh, from two main parts. And within the next 30 to 40 minutes, I will cover two main topics. First, I will update you on the uh, product portfolio. Because as you know, for instance, today, Intel has launched um, Yes, this paper launch, but still, it, it, Intel has launched the Xeon 6th uh, generation uh, CPUs. And then, a second topic I will cover in more in depth, uh, in more details, uh, that would be um, products and solutions uh, built around artificial intelligence, AI, uh, which is the most popular products within the supermarket currently. Uh, and, um, uh, to begin with our product portfolio, I'd like to remind you that we follow um, basically a pretty simple marketing uh, positioning um, guidance, uh, which is called good, better, best. Meaning that within each of our product groups, uh, for instance, storage systems, um, rack systems, GPU systems, within the, each group, you will definitely be able to find uh, some of the products which, uh, <coughs> which are positioned as a good, better, or best. With the meaning that best, uh, you are absolutely familiar with this approach. It's like Core i3, Core i5, Core i7, BMW 357, and so on and so on. So it's not a new one. The main idea is that within each of the product groups, uh, you will be able to find uh, some of the products um, which uh, definitely fit uh, your particular needs or end user needs. And uh, all of that is based on this uh, good, better, best approach. Best meaning that the product has features which is absolutely scalable um, in terms of number of I.O. slots, uh, number of games, uh, maximum uh, supported TDP within the CPU. Uh, so the main idea is that uh, you can scale internally uh, platform uh, at the maximum level according to the limitations which are uh, imposed by, uh, by form factor. I mean that definitely 2U is more scalable than 1U and so forth. That would be best positioning. Uh, better positioning means that uh, we have balance between cost and features within the product. And good uh, simply means that the product itself is highly optimized for the low cost. That, that's my uh, main, main point here. And here I just uh, put on the slide side names like Cloud DC, for instance. Uh, that, uh, uh, product family is within the REC uh, product group. Uh, this product uh, family is basically uh, positioned as a uh, better solution because uh, it has balance between all the features which are delivered by Intel or AMD, as well as uh, pr product cost, uh, uh, final product cost. And uh, another product which would be positioned as the best within this segment uh, called Hyper. Uh, which provides maximum, uh, which would deliver uh, the platform from Intel or AMD. 
And the mainstream products are basically about the cost-optimized solutions. So here is the main idea. And with this idea in mind, I'm switching to so-called product generations. Because uh, when you start to uh, select the product uh, within our pr uh, uh, product pages, you will uh, immediately uh, meet some uh, uh, product generations designations. Uh, both uh, for all of the cases, of those designations are around the CPU or GPU used. And uh, as you know, we have products which are built around Intel uh, product portfolio, AMD product portfolio, and Ampere product portfolio. Also, I want to mention because that would be not the general purpose CPU, uh, the Grace uh, CPU from Nvidia, which is. Uh, so a Grace Super Cheap or Grace Hopa APU, uh, actually from NVIDIA. But main idea is that uh, within each um, within each branch we have generations. And for instance, for Intel, uh, moving just from the bottom, I would recommend uh, today focus on Xeon uh, third generation of products, which corresponds to our X12 family of products of systems. Whenever you see on the uh, generation description these X's or H's, you have to understand that's about generations, okay? And for third generation of CPUs, you need to select uh, X12 systems. That, that's, it. that's basically the point. Uh, as a reminder, the second uh, generation and uh, second Xeon uh, and uh, Scalable zone, the second gen and the second R, which is stands, R stands for refresh from Intel. Uh, they are sent to end of life by Intel uh, and we just follow. Uh, so all uh, excellent products are currently in the stage of uh, uh, end of life. So then we'll move to scalable uh, generation fourth and fifth, and that's about uh, 13th generation of Intel uh, uh, product, uh, products. Intel based products. And what was introduced today, and uh, some of you already aware, and you have already read news from Intel from us, uh, we have launched a, a 14th generation of uh, our product uh, family for 6th generation of Intel CPUs. And here, uh, you have to remember that, unfortunately, uh, the whole family of uh, this uh, sixth generation of Xeons is split in uh, basically four different, um, four different product segments. Within those product segments, uh, there are two different sockets. And within each uh, socket, you can populate it with two different CPUs. So that would be quite complex and complicated launch. And uh, what was launched today, basically, uh, Intel has launched a Xeon 6th generation, which is built around so-called efficient cores. And uh, you have probably have read the news uh, saying that Intel has launched 70, uh, sorry, 6700 uh, uh, CPUs uh, with the E designation standing for uh, efficient cores. And a few words about efficient cores. Uh, for those who uh, basically resell or have uh, at home uh, the stock PCs, you know that starting from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from 11th or 12th generation of the stock CPUs, within the CPU there are two different cores. Efficient cores and performance cores. Efficient uh, cores means that it is uh, energy efficient uh, with low, a little bit lower performance than performance cores, but uh, basically mostly used for uh, workloads which do not require significant performance from the CPU. Uh, and here, with this launch, Intel totally disaggregated those cores uh, and uh, they just populated uh, CPUs with the efficient cores or performance cores. Uh, there will be no CPUs with the mix of the cores. Uh, you have either 6700E or 6700P, for instance. And uh, P designation uh, stands for performance cores. 
And the main idea is that both of these CPU families uh, will fit within the single socket. You can populate socket with either uh, performance cores or efficient cores. And today, Intel has launched a, a single uh, socket, uh, which could be populated with either of two CPUs, of two families. But current availability is limited by the efficient cores only. Performance cores will be launched later. And within the next half of the year, Intel will uh, launch another socket, which is uh, called AP, stands for Advanced Performance. Uh, and uh, it, this socket will also be uh, uh, capable to be populated either with efficient cores or performance cores. And the main difference between sockets, it's about co-count and number of channels. Uh, with this one, th there is still eight channels, memory channels per socket, and here there will be 12 channels per socket. And different core count. Current core count for SP6 edition core is 100 up to 144 uh, 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 CPU cores. That's about Intel. With AMD, totally same approach, but different CPUs. And uh, current generation, which is um, on the market, it, it is H13, 13th generation of um, AMD uh, uh, systems. And this generation is built around two CPUs, Genoa and Bergamo. And both of these CPUs, they are built around so-called fourth generation of Apex. So fourth generation. And uh, within the few uh, months, AMD is going, is going to roll out a fifth generation of Epic uh, called Turing. And this CPU will be incompatible with the current platform, which is good news. And the bad news, within this family, there will be CPUs with up to 500 watts TDP. And with the new memory speed, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 6400 uh, 6, uh, megatransfers per second. And uh, for, for such systems, which require, uh, which, which will be capable to support such CPUs, we'll build um, the new motherboards, the new systems, Again, and the, the main feature would be that a that, uh, uh, system will be capable to support up to 500 watt uh, TDP CPUs. Okay? And third family of products, it's about Ampere. And currently, we are with the Serial uh, or third generation Ampere um, uh, ARM course CPUs. And uh, basically, what we know is that Ampere is going to launch uh, Ampere 1 uh, within the few uh, months, uh, which will have up to 256 cores. And uh, just uh, regarding those efficient cores, or so-called uh, cloud-native cores, or you call it how you want. I mean, uh, basically, currently, AMD has such solutions as uh, its code name is Bergamo, as well as Ampere has such uh, uh, cloud native uh, CPUs or uh, CPUs with cloud native cores. So, and Intel uh, now has uh, this kind of cores. And the uh, main idea with those cores is about energy efficiency, and this slide just shows you that we are talking uh, with. Uh, the today announcement, we are talking not about the whole um, uh, data center and um, uh, the, the, current, the current announcement is only around so-called cloud-native uh, uh, applications. Those applications could be microservices, uh, DevOps applications, or some uh, network microservices or network function virtualization, virtualized network functions, Cloud, cloud native uh, products, content delivery, and, and so on. So we're talking about uh, some sub-segment of data center where you can sell those um, energy efficient cores or uh, sixth generation Intel Xeon CPUs uh, with the uh, product designation 6700E. That's, that's one. And uh, now switching gears to our product portfolio, I mean, nothing really changed. Uh, I mean, we just have uh, still uh, 
some of the product groups, just to name uh, main product groups uh, like uh, Rex. Uh, uh, for multi-node uh, systems, uh, as a reminder, we have two different product groups. Uh, one product group is built around blade approach when you have active networking without, within the chassis. And uh, second one is uh, built around multi-node approach, we call them twins. Uh, so multi-node meaning that within the chassis you can have up to eight uh, independent nodes, nodes, and those nodes, they share uh, cooling as well as power. So that's about multi-nodes. Uh, then uh, we have storage solutions, uh, and storage uh, usually we have uh, three main um, storage servers. We don't have systems, as you know, but we have storage servers. And uh, a lot of products currently launched with the uh, NVMe in mind. Uh, I mean, following this EDS effect form factor, e E3S, uh, E1S, E1L, and so on. So uh, that's about NVMe solutions. Then we have top load solutions. Uh, basically, the, the main principle is that you populate the, uh, the, the node with the um, drives from above. And uh, third one, uh, still we have a quite significant number of systems with the front or rear uh, population uh, backplanes. So that's about storage. Uh, then we have GPU systems. Uh, and uh, finally, two uh, segments for IoT or embedded solutions. We have a lot of products uh, built for this segment, and uh, all the products are very di diversified. Uh, we can start from the entry level CPUs like uh, uh, Atom E360 something, and uh, up to the uh, DP system uh, fully populated with the uh, Intel or AMD DP solutions. But the main concept that all of these systems, they are built around chassis which are capable to be installed not in the racks, but in the closets. Uh, telecom closets or embedded closets, so having just from accessible um, uh, parts uh, in the system. So the main idea is that Everything is built around uh, embedded approach. Embedded approach. Sometimes it's called IoT, but you can call it also embedded too. And finally, MP systems. Uh, we have current generation. Uh, we have uh, three to four systems, which are either uh, four-way systems and uh, one single system, which is eight-way. That's maximum scaled up approach to uh, increase performance within the chassis. I mean, uh, just installing uh, up to eight uh, CPUs within the chassis. So, uh, meaning basically that nothing has changed. We just follow this general approach, having uh, such product groups, and we just uh, basically refresh uh, the content of the every chassis with new generations of CPUs, memory, storage, and so on. And then finally, we just a few years ago, we started to sell as a single node uh, racks. You just purchase from us completely populated rack, either air-cooled or liquid-cooled, it doesn't matter, but you just buy it from us complete, completely populated rack. And our rack performance in terms of number of uh, uh, built and sold uh, racks today, uh, that's around 5,000 racks per month. That's our capacity for, uh, I mean, for selling such um, uh, pots um, to, to the market. And uh, basically, here is the, the review of the product lines uh, available within our portfolio. But now I just want to switch to um, to switch to GPUs. Uh, why GPUs? Because I mean, this whole topic of uh, generative AI or LLM, uh, everything related to deep neural networks today is a hot topic. And uh, before jumping into the hot topic, you have to understand uh, what is the uh, entrance ticket, how much is the admission ticket for, for that. 
And if anybody tries to understand that, he goes definitely to the market leader uh, for building GPUs or accelerators, uh, NVIDIA, and then immediately he recognizes that we are talking about some huge, uh, not always understandable amount of nodes uh, which do something we could not definitely understand what it does, but basically we have to know that each node, uh, uh, the average price is what a million. So, and here we're talking about 512 nodes, each node of quarter of a million, and it does something. But uh, it really finally scares those who want to jump into this um, uh, train. And uh, what I wanted to explain you that basically this admission ticket uh, cost is not so huge uh, if you want or someone wants to uh, to jump on this train. And to understand that, I want to show you uh, quite famous slides, uh, which just explains what are the stages of uh, so-called model development and deployment. And I will try to explain you that really, I mean, the admission ticket is not so significant. You don't need to follow those uh, huge clusters and uh, try to understand, I mean, what does Google, what does Meta or anybody else, because there they use thousands of nodes. And really, when you try to understand the whole uh, pipeline, you will be able to divide this pipeline to segment this pipeline in, in three main stages. I will call that stage one, stage two, and stage three. Stage one, uh, I will do some analogy. Stage one, it's like elementary school. Yeah, is something wrong? No? Oh, sorry, no. The, oh, everything is fine. Okay. Everything is fine. So, okay. The analogy is that stage number one is for elementary school. Uh, the child goes to elementary school. What he does, he learns how to speak, how to write, how to uh, math. Uh, maximum is algebra. Th th that's it. That will be the first stage. Second stage, when you move from um, high school to university, you have some focus, a kind of focus on the particular skill. For instance, for me, I have graduated technical university. Before that, it was like um, a school. In, in the technical, in the school, I learned how to read and teach, uh, sorry, read and write. And in uh, university, I was able to learn um, how to build semiconductor products and how to design PCs, basically. That's uh, basically my skills, uh, which I move after this stage to the third stage, which is called inference, where I moved from my school to my first working place, and that working place was around uh, HP products, and I was acting as the HP product manager. So I was basically uh, applied my skills I got in the technical university to uh, my uh, job uh, <laughs> to sell uh, uh, to sell systems, networking, uh, and, and so on. And here uh, you basically have the same three stages. Uh, they called, uh, first stage is called training. And that one is really very complicated. Uh, very complex uh, 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 process of building so-called 